Today we are looking at custom made action figures and deciding if they are amazing or a piece of trash. Stick around to the end because the last one is absolutely ridiculous. Hello and welcome to the Nerdy Things with Brendan channel. I'm your host Brendan. For those who don't know, within the action figure collecting community, there are those people who make custom figures. These are figures that are not widely produced and manufactured, but rather a one of a kind figure. They will typically take parts from existing figures and kit bash them, meaning they take parts from multiple figures to make their own desired figure. And sometimes they even use custom pieces like 3D printed heads or cloth goods. Any will then get repainted to look like the desired figure. Because of all the work that goes into making a custom figures, these figures really range in price. I have seen and bought a lot of custom figures in my life. And the price can range from anywhere from 10 bucks to $400 or more. Sometimes that outrageous price is justified. A lot of work went into these figures and it looks great. Other times these figures are a piece of junk with a simple paint job or a part swap. They will then pawn the piece of junk off at an insane price. Today I'm reviewing some custom figures I found on Mercari. And I'm going to be rating these on a few different factors. Number one. How does the figure look? Does it look like the desired character? Number two, how hard does the figure look to make? How much work went into making this custom figure? And number three, is the price fair for what you're getting? We will then decide if the figure is a steal at the price they are selling it for, or if it's a piece of trash. All of these figures were found weeks before this video came out, so by the time the video actually comes out and you're seeing it, these figures may have sold and I am not promoting any of these figures and I'm not sponsored by Mercari. Now the last thing before we get started, I also want to say customizing is tough. It takes time to get really good at it and I have not included the names of the sellers selling these figures because I don't want anyone to go out and give them crap about these figures or their work. Some of these sellers might just be starting in customizing figures and you can't expect the Mona Lisa from someone just starting. Alternatively, some of these sellers might have been doing this for years, but either way, please don't track down and harass the seller or the creator of these figures. The first custom we are looking at is listed as a Sydney Prescott from the Scream movies. And to answer the first question, does it look good? I have a picture of Sydney from the most recent Scream movie. Overall, it looks okay, but the clothes don't really match. Now the second question, how hard is this custom to make? And the answer is not very hard. From the neck down, it's just the NECA Lori Strode from Halloween 2018. And all they did here was a head swap, but I don't recognize the head they used. And if you know, please let me know in the comments. And the final question, is it a fair price? The seller is only listing this for $12, which is honestly very fair. I've been looking for a Lori Strode for some time, and she ranges from $15 to $40. Why have I been waiting so long? I'm really holding out for that $15 one. So the price of this custom is less than the parts to even make the figure. It's missing the two lorry heads and the shotgun, so that brings it down a bit from the price of a lorry figure. But they did a head swap as well. So overall, I think this is a very fair price. A steal even. It's not the greatest looking figure. It doesn't look a ton like Sidney Prescott, but for 12 bucks, you can't get much better. So this figure is a steal. This next figure is a custom zombie Iron Man. And does the figure look good? It looks decent. How hard is it to make this figure? Not at all hard, and this one kind of pisses me off a little bit. This is the Marvel Legends of What If Zombie Iron Man, and all they did to this figure was give it a black wash. This makes the figure look a little dirtier and more realistic than the What If version. Because What If was a cartoon, this figure looks a little bit animated, and I think they just wanted a more realistic look. I'm guessing the seller just wanted to see how this looked on the figure and wasn't pleased with the result, so now they want to sell it. And is it a fair price? They're charging $40 for this figure. I looked at the price of a new version on Amazon, and right now you can get this for $16. Even if we give him the benefit of the doubt and say he bought it when it first came out for about $25, he's still charging more for the paint job. And overall, the paint job looks okay, but it's really not hard to do. You really just take a black paint, kind of splatter it all over, let it dry. And I don't think anyone would pay a ton for this figure, but it's really just the paint job you're paying for at that price. And it's not the worst price ever, 
so it's not too far from the original figure and even with the new price and some decent work going into this figure it's not bad overall so this one's not trash but not a steal the next figure is listed as a custom red hood figure and does it look like red hood it's got the bat symbol on the chest and he's got the red hood helmet but he hasn't even worn a green jacket in the comics so in terms of how hard is this custom to make not at all hard this was built using the DC McFarlane Toys Grifter figure, and they removed the head of Grifter. And it looks like they may have custom sculpted a Red Hood helmet. I'm not sure about that. It doesn't look like any other helmet I've seen on any other Red Hood figure. But they then gave the figure a pistol, being the red bat symbol on the chest. But overall, this was not hard to do. And they're charging $50 for this, which I think is a little outrageous. You can get a grifter figure now for $18 on Amazon. I got mine when it first came out for about 20 bucks. So for $30 extra, you get a pistol, a red bat symbol, and a red hood helmet. I don't want to be really mean here, but I don't think the helmet looks the greatest. I think if anything, they brought the figure's price down. Grifter doesn't even have that many figures made, so down the road, the price of this figure could go up in value. We'll see. But it doesn't look that good. It doesn't look like a ton of work went into this. And it doesn't really look like any known version of Red Hood. And for what they did to the figure, $50 is just too much. Maybe like $15 or $25 would be a better price, but $50 is too much for this. This next figure is listed as a custom Cyborg Spider-Man. And now does it look like Cyborg Spider-Man? Sort of. Spider-Man colors are inverted because this is actually a character named Webman. In terms of cyborg parts, he has a leg and a foot. Hasbro actually released a cyborg Spider-Man not that long ago, maybe two, three years ago now. But it was based on the comic book look. And in the comics and on this figure, he has a cyborg eye and a left arm. Overall, I'm going to say it's technically a cyborg Spider-Man, but it's a bit of a stretch. Now to answer the second question, is this custom hard to make? As I said, this is the Marvel Legends Webman shown here with a leg and a foot from the Invincible Iron Man stealth suit. The foot can be heated up and popped off and it's not too hard to do. But replacing the leg is a little outside of even my wheelhouse. But an experienced customizer, it's not that hard and it can be done in minutes if you know what you're doing. So I'll say it's an intermediate challenge to make this figure. And that really just means it's not easy enough that anyone can do, but if you watch a YouTube video on dismantling a Marvel Legends figure, you can probably figure this out. Now the last part of the ranking is the price fair. And honestly, this looks fairly bad, I think, and just looks like someone making do with leftover parts or fodder as they call it. They took what they had and made a figure somewhat resembling someone else and then tried to sell it. Usually fodder sells for real cheap, but if you have a ton of parts, a little bit more. But for $25, this is the price of a new Marvel Legends figure, and it's just not close enough to the actual Cyborg Spider-Man to justify the price. But maybe $10 to $15 for fodder, but not $25. But I think this one's not the worst on the list, but definitely not a steal. This next one is just listed as a custom Thor figure. And other than the robotic hand and the face, it looks like Thor. They probably could have done better listing this as a custom Ragnarok figure. And for those who don't know, Ragnarok is a robotic Thor that just kind of gets out of control and wrecks some havoc. But this one wasn't hard to make. This custom uses the body of the Marvel Legends Thor Love and Thunder figure with the head, head, and hammer from the Marvel Legends Ragnarok figure. What most likely happened here, and I've seen done on social media, someone wanted the Ragnarok figure and used the regular Thor parts just to have a classic looking Thor. They then got the armored and non-armored Love and Thunder Thor figures and wanted the head without the helmet on their figure. So they just swapped the head and now they're left with the helmeted version, but it's going to look weird on another figure. They're then left with the Love and Thunder non-armored body and the Ragnarok accessories. Just combine them to make a figure. It's not hard at all. 
Now on the bright side, this one is only listed for $11. It's very justified. This is basically just fodder, but I've seen so many people do this and try to sell the leftovers. And the downside, nobody really wants it. So for $11, it might not sell, but we'll see. But this is definitely a more justified custom on this list. The next figure is a custom spot figure. And overall, I think he looks pretty good. We got a version of the spot not long ago based on his appearance in Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. It nailed the look of the movie, that being animated. So he's got thinner legs and arms and doesn't quite look like a regular Marvel Legends figure because he's the animated version. But this one uses what I believe is the Marvel Legends Spider-Man body. I could be wrong. But the hands are clearly Doctor Strange hands painted and the paint job it could be better, but it's not the worst I've seen. And overall, I think the figure looks pretty decent. Now, in terms of how hard is it to make, it looks like the Marvel Legends Spider-Man body, and you first paint the whole thing white. I zoomed in on the image, and I looked at some of the joints to see if they did a thorough paint job, and it would appear they got in all the joints. They may have even taken it all apart and painted it. That's really doing your due diligence. But they just painted some black spots on the figure and painted the hands. And the hands you can see, they didn't completely paint. You can still see some of the tan skin from Doctor Strange on the ends there. But overall, this isn't that hard to do. But it's possible they completely took it apart, which would make it a little bit harder. It's listed for $50, and I think that's actually pretty reasonable for this. Depending on the body used, the original figure probably costs like 20 bucks, maybe a little more. Then a decent paint job and accessories. It's a true custom at least, and not just some part swap or fodder pieces. So I think this one is very fair. This next one is a custom Sandman, and this one annoys me a little bit. It's on the body of the Marvel Legends Hydro Man. And Sandman has an iconic costume, and that's just kind of ignored here with this custom. He's also got the same haircut since his creation, and they didn't do that either. But they painted the arms to look like sand, and it's okay. It looks a little bit more like mud, but it could pass for sand. But Hasbro actually made a really good looking Marvel Legends Sandman, and overall, it looks nothing like the Sandman here. Now, was this hard to do? Not really. They painted the water effects and the arms to look like sand, and that's really it. Otherwise, it's just Hydro Man. It's a decent enough paint job, but it just doesn't scream Sandman to me. Just, they barely did anything to this figure. To call it Sandman's a little ridiculous. Now, for $31, it's okay. The Hydro Man figure currently costs more than that. I got mine a year, well, years ago when it first came out for $20. Bucks. Maybe they did too. So I can't say whether they brought down the value of this figure or not, but for $31, there's way better Sandmans on the market. This is a waste of money, time, and effort, and I think this one's kind of trash. Next figure doesn't have a name. At least it wasn't in the title or the description when I found these pictures. It just said Custom Marvel Legends figure. I really don't know who it's supposed to be, so I can't say how good it looks. I think it's supposed to be Blue Marvel, but I really can't say. I could be wrong. This figure was made with the Marvel Legends Boomerang figure, and with a cape from Moon Knight, I believe, and the head of the recent Blue Marvel figure. Overall, it's not that hard to make. Anyone can really do this one. It's just parts from three different figures. I actually just bought a Boomerang myself not too long ago, and it cost me $17. The Moon Knight and Blue Marvel probably cost about $25 each. So let's say $70 in parts to make this. Then they can probably still get something for the rest of the parts left over. So for very little work and being able to sell the other parts and not saying who this is supposed to be, I think this one kind of stinks. It's not the worst, but $25 might be a little much for this one. This next one is a custom Amazing Spider-Man Marvel Legends figure, which is ridiculous. It looks just like him. Now why would that be? Because it's actually the Diamond Select Amazing Spider-Man figure. It's not even a Marvel Legends. No parts of this entire custom are. And I actually got one of these when it came out for about $25. And since then it's gone up in price. But I recently got a second one. 
at a steal for only $20. These now go for about $40 or more. So the person just took that figure, threw in some webs and effects, and now it's $61. And it's alright. These do sell for $40 or more now, plus you get the effects that are included with the figure when you buy it. And the webs aren't bad either, you don't get those. The effects don't quite go with the figure. This figure is from a movie, and these are very comic book looking effects. But for $61, I think this one is justified. But it is not a Marvel Legends at all. This next one is actually from the same exact seller as the last one, but this one is a custom Marvel Legends Spider-Man stealth suit from Far From Home, and it looks just like it because it is the Marvel Legends stealth suit from Far From Home. And this one's at least a Marvel Legends, so hey, some bonus points on that. But once again, the only thing they did here was give you some custom webs and effects. They didn't change the figure at all, it's just the figure plus their extra stuff. Now this figure they're asking $54 for, and this one is a little ridiculous. I actually had to get this figure again last year because my dog got a hold of it and chewed it to crap. It looked terrible. My wife and I joked it was now the bomb victim Spider-Man because it looked so bad and missing parts. But my new figure only cost me $20, which is pretty fair and comparable to the others that were selling. So this one, for a $34 extra, you get some webs and effects, and for $34, it's just not enough. This one isn't terrible, but it's a bit of a ripoff. Not trash, but not worth your money. The next custom is a Madcap figure, and overall, it doesn't look terrible. They took the body from the Marvel Legends Paladin and added the Madcap head from the Marvel Legends Deadpool X-Men figure. We still need a classic looking madcap, but this figure isn't terrible overall. Now is this custom hard to do? Not at all. It's really just a simple head swap anyone can do. This Deadpool figure currently sells for about $30 and Paladin for $22. So for $52 you can make this yourself. So is the price justified? It's okay. This could just be another fodder figure. I don't really know. If it's actually a custom, it's not hard to do. It doesn't cost much, so I'm gonna say this one's justified. This next one is a custom Cap Wolf. Cap Wolf is just Captain America turned into a werewolf. It happens sometime in like the 60s, something like that, I think. But this figure uses the Infinity War Marvel Legends Captain America and the actual Cap Wolf Marvel Legends figure. It would appear they took the Cap Wolf head and popped it on the Marvel Legends cap. They then painted it to match the color of his outfit. They then painted the hands and forearms as well. And overall, I think this is actually well done. It looks pretty good. The only problem is Cap Wolf has the A on his head and this is the Infinity War cap. So at this time in the series, he removed the star from his chest. and like We all thought he was going to be Nomad, but he's just going by Steve Rogers. So it's just weird to go like half Captain America and not full Captain America. So the body mold is nearly identical to the Civil War Captain America. I think you could have used that figure instead. And then you have that star, you have the A on the head, and it just matches. It looks like a better Cap Wolf. And another note is they included the regular hands and the head for Infinity War Captain America. But now the forearms are painted like brown to look like a werewolf. So if you swap it, now you get Captain America with fuzzy arms. So it looks pretty good. It's somewhat hard to do. It does take some effort and some experience to be able to do this one. But for $34, I think this one is very justified. The Cap Wolf figure now sells for way more than that. And it's mainly because people want that classic looking Captain America figure. So they likely have this figure and they had the leftover Cap Wolf head. They just popped it on the Infinity War cap and they said, hey, here's a new custom. But overall, I think this is a decent figure. Price is justified, not trash. The next one is listed as a custom Deadpool figure. And it's got his mask, it has swords, he uses the back and black mask instead of the classic red and black suit he wears. It could be Deadpool, but there's a big issue here in calling that Deadpool. It's just the back and black Deadpool head on a Marvel Legends Blade figure, and Deadpool and Blade aren't exactly the same skin color. 
Deadpool is a white guy with messed up skin. Blade is a black guy. So I think this would be better as a custom Blade figure. Where he wears a Deadpool mask. So I'm going to say it looks okay. I could see an alternate universe where Blade becomes Deadpool. Now is this custom hard to do? Not at all. It's really just another head swab. Now for the price of $57, is it justified? I don't think so. I think this one's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, it's a lot for a made-up character, you know. Um, I don't like spending a ton on figures just in general, but for a made-up character, spending even more, it, it's a little crazy. And the blade is actually $126 on Amazon right now, but I got mine back when it came out for about 20 bucks. And I think a loose one on Mercari or eBay would probably cost you 20 bucks. The Deadpool back in black figure they used has two different heads. So they likely wanted to use the other head and had this head left over so they could use it. But that figure costs about $70 right now. So both figures are expensive if you want to make this custom. But I don't know. A made up character and charging this much, it's just not very justified. And I think... This one kind of sucks. I'm going to rate it trash. The next one is a custom Moon Knight. It uses the forearms and head from one of the Marvel Legends Moon Knights. The one shown here. But I believe the lower legs are actually from another Moon Knight. I don't have picture here. The chest, upper arms, leg, and belt all belong to the Marvel Legends Retro Punisher. It then has a cloth cape. One of Moon Knight's Moonarangs. I think that's what they're called. Just his version of Batman's Batarang. They must have heated the plastic and popped off some parts of other figures and then popped them back together. But overall, I think this looks really good. It's very well done. Not the hardest custom to do, but somewhat advanced. Luckily, the parts are black and white, so they probably didn't have to paint it to color match. Now, for $97, is it worth it? I don't think so. I think it looks great and these figures are expensive to get and doing this custom wasn't cheap. It's got the cloth cape as well and those can get pricey. For $97 it's not the most ridiculous figure but I'd be way more likely buy it at like $50 to $75. I don't really like these characters that are two different characters combined. I prefer just a classic looking figure or a movie figure. And I don't really have the shelf space or budget to start getting these combination figures. It's really well done. It looks great. For $97, it isn't bad. I wouldn't call it a steal, and it's definitely not trash. And now we get to the last one that aggravates the hell out of me because it's ridiculous. This one is a custom Maria Hill, and it looks just like Maria Hill. Now, why would that be? Because it's the recent Maria Hill figure we got like a year ago. But can you spot the difference between these two? There's two big ones here. If you can't tell, they really are just the same exact figure, but they took it and gave it bigger boobs and cleavage, and it's pretty ridiculous. I've read a lot of comics, and is Maria Hill a babe in comics? It depends. In the Invincible Iron Man series from 2008, 2012, something like that, she kinda is. But otherwise, she's a very serious and modest character, so this is just kind of dumb. It doesn't really fit the character. Now, is it hard to make this custom? Honestly, it's pretty hard. Yeah, that was a pun. Hope you liked it. But in all seriousness, this custom is a little difficult to do. I see two ways they could have done this. The first, more simpler option is to remove the head, arms, pop the upper torso off of the figure, they then paint it tan to match the skin tone, and you now have almost a bare chest. You could almost leave it and make a topless Maria Hill if you wanted. They then get a blue paint and they try to match the blue color of the outfit. They then add some detail like the zipper on the figure. That's probably what they did because the blue on the chest is slightly off from the rest of the figure. I think they also added a collar as well. I don't recall if the zipper on the original figure is sculpted or not but they might have sanded that off if so. But this method is a lot of work, but actually the easier method. The other method is to still pop off the body parts and remove the upper torso. 
I don't think they did it this way because the chest still looks the same size, but it could be a custom sculpted piece or a 3D piece. That would explain the cleavage in between the boobs. That's not on the original figure. They then just go about painting it to match the body again and pop it all back together. But to measure and print the piece is a lot of work and sculpting it would also be a lot of work. Either way they did it, it's a lot of work just to give Maria Hill a boob job. Now it's listed for $159 and this figure only cost about $20 a couple months ago when I got mine. I got three. Even now I'm looking on Amazon, it's still only $20. So for $139, you're just getting this figure, but with cleavage. So is it worth it? I think not one bit. It's a lot of work, as I said, so the price is somewhat justified. But to pay that for the same figure with a slight modification is kind of ridiculous. And this figure kind of annoys me. It's not trash because it's well done and it took a lot of time and effort to do. But the price and what they did is just ridiculous. And that's the last custom figure I have to show off today. But once again, I want to say please don't go and find these figures and harass the sellers. That's not cool at all and you're really just being a dick if you do. As I said at the beginning, some of these customizers might just be starting. So don't harass them and discourage them from doing more. By doing more customs, they only get better and with more customizers on the market we get cheaper and better customs i'm not sponsored by marcari in any way i'm not promoting it i'm not telling you to go buy these things i've had my pros and cons with marcari so it's really up to you if you want to use it but i'm not telling you to thanks for taking the time to watch this video it's the first video i made like this so please let me know if you like it i think it's rather interesting but i've been very wrong about that kind of stuff before and this video took a lot of time to make, so your support is greatly appreciated. If you want a second video, or you even want to see this video become a series, you have to let me know. I would like to monetize the channel at some point too, but I still need to get the watch hours up, subscribers up. It's been a struggle, but I truly appreciate the support. Please like and subscribe. Check me out on Facebook. If you like this video and you have customs you want to share with me for a future video, you can send those to me on Facebook. Please include the picture of the figure, the price, and where you found it. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.